Well, this was a very interesting and shocking revelation that came out of Chris Cuomo. So in case y'all haven't heard, Chris Cuomo was doing a podcast or he was a part of a podcast and he revealed something very interesting about what he was going through after he got fired from CNN. And of course, we all know when he got fired and why he got fired as well. And it's kind of crazy considering, you know, the reason he got fired is the same re- is in connection to why his brother, Andrew Cuomo, the former governor of New York, got removed from his position. And that's basically him confiding in his brother with stuff that was going on that he just kind of kept close to the chest and didn't tell anybody about. But basically what it came out was that Chris Cuomo was so distraught with what happened to him at CNN that he actually contemplated on going postal, quote unquote, at CNN and then taking himself out. I'm sure those of you who have heard that term going postal before know exactly what that means. But for those of you who don't, that basically means he planned on going to shoot the place up and then take himself out. But I'm going to go ahead now and read this article and see what else they are talking about. Ex CNN anchor Chris Cuomo opened up about his grim, how grim his outlook was following his 2021 ousting from the network. Appearing on Anthony Scaramucci's open book podcast, Cuomo spoke about the inner turmoil he felt after he was shit canned by CNN in the wake of multiple scandals. You got to make things happen. There is no luck. There is no fate. There is no destiny. What happens is what you make happen and how you deal with that is what is made to happen to you for better and for worse. Cuomo told Scaramucci on Wednesday podcast, and you know, I make a lot of mistakes, sometimes for good reason, sometimes for bad reason. I'm very flawed. There's damage. There's damage that's relatable to people. There's damage that's unrelatable to people that I have to deal with that I try to do deal with that I do the work on. I still fail. And I have learned to accept that. I had to accept because I was going to kill everybody, including myself, Cuomo said. Things can consume you. Italians are so passionate. And I really had to fight against that because, you know, just like you did, I got too many people counting on me. He continued, and look, I'm going to screw up. And I always tell my kids, you know, almost 2017, 13, that don't be me. Learn from me. I love you. I will always love you. Doesn't matter what you do. And I'm here for whatever I can do. I'm going to get angry. I'm going to screw up. I'm going to make mistakes. I'm going to say and do things that you should not say and do. And I try, but if, but I fail, you know, and you have to know that I'm not here. Okay. And don't idolize me because I am no idol. I'm just someone to learn from for better and worse. And I wish I had been told that more. I wish I didn't have to go through that same cycle that so many of us do where you put everyone in your life up on a pedestal because when they fall, that rebound effect is usually too dramatic. And had I just clear had and had I just had clearer eyes from the beginning, it would have been made or made more sense sooner. A representative for Cuomo declined to comment. Cuomo, who was seen as most watched anchor, was initially benched from the network following revelations of his close involvement in a sexual harassment scandal plaguing his brother, ousted Democratic New York City Governor Andrew Cuomo, whom the primetime host actively advised behind the scenes despite suggesting otherwise to viewers. However, Cuomo was axed after seeing and learned of a damaging misconduct allegation from his tenure as ABC News. A former colleague claimed he had sexually assaulted her, which he denied. Critics previously sounded the alarm about the conflict of interest during Cuomo's coverage of the Wuvit pandemic, when he invited his brother on for a series of chummy interviews as the governor nursing home scandal began brewing. Last year, Cuomo launched a whopping $125 million arbitration suit against CNN over his termination, which is still ongoing. Cuomo has since joined News Nations, hosting a primetime show that has so far struggled to gain a following since its October launch, averaging less than 200,000 total viewers. Meanwhile, CNN has yet to fill his vacant time slot, which has seen multiple trial balloons, including failed stunts by Jim Acosta and Jake Tapper. 
Well, there you have it. To be honest, I can't say that I feel bad for Chris Cuomo again. Like, I didn't feel bad for him back then, nor did I feel bad for his brother as well. Y'all knew exactly what y'all was doing and what you had your hand in. Understandably, that you were trying to, you know, you was having your brother's back and, this, you know, to hold my brother's keeper and everything like that. But at the same time, did you really want to have your brother's back with stuff that was like that? Now, again, we don't know if any of that stuff was true. At the time, it was just simply allegations. I don't know where it is right now, because at this point, that story has pretty much fell from grace and no one's really talking about it at all. It's more like a personal thing or a in-house closed in type of thing. But I didn't know about that other part about his, his allegation or allegations against him from the time he was at ABC. I didn't hear about that. Or maybe if I did, it was in passing because I really did not know much about that at all but the fact that he got on this podcast and revealed that he wanted to go postal that's that's crazy but it's not out of the ordinary because a lot of people who feel like they've gotten done wrong by their job and they feel like no one was listening to them and they just already made up in their minds about who this person is and they're just going to get rid of them anyway a lot of people have those thoughts and some of the people actually carry out those thoughts. We have seen those type of incidents before in the past. I've even talked about a couple of those where people go on shooting sprees at their job because of grievances they've had with their jobs. And usually I find that when people do those things, one of the things they do in investigations or should do is to find out if they had a work history there. That's why when it came to what Anthony McRae did at Michigan State, they wanted to see if he had any connection to the school. Like, did he work there or something like that? Because then they could say maybe he had a grievance, maybe he got fired or something like that. And that's usually what they do with someone who goes to their job and commits this type of thing. Because it could be a thing of they got terminated from their job or they quit their job. Or maybe it was something going on at their job where no one was believing them. It could have been something like harassment. Uh, it could have been a boatload of things. So I can see why he said it. He was bold to say it out loud on a podcast where I'm sure hunt like that. I don't know uh, how many viewers uh, this podcast gets, but let's hypothetically say they get hundreds of thousands of views every time they go and post a podcast recording, streaming, whatever you want to call it. That means now many people have caught on to it in such as lamestream media because this is where I read the article from. So now they're going to be like, oh, wow, this guy has violent tendencies. And now they're going to be looking at him like kind of crazy. I wouldn't be surprised if Chris gets a knock on his door and they'd be like, can we take a look around your spot? Just to, you know, to see, because, again, of what he said. And let's not forget that one time that a couple years ago, this is pre pandemic, by the way. And I think I spoke on this, too, where he was in some kind of a coffee shop. And I want to say he was in New Jersey when this happened. And some person in the coffee shop had said something to him that he felt offensive. And I guess it's supposed to be offensive to those who are Italian. He called him Fredo. That's what it was. And for those of you who don't get the reference, Fredo was a character in The Godfather who was like the black sheep of the family. And he was like a snitch. So I guess Italians, if someone calls them that, that's offensive. And he felt he felt some type of way about it. And he was like checking this guy and it was someone was recording it because I guess someone recognized him. But if y'all remember that, you know exactly what I'm talking about. You could easily go and look that up on YouTube and you'll, the video probably should still be up there. But yeah, Chris, that probably wasn't the best thing to say because if them people try to come and knock on your door, they're going to look it right back to you saying, what saying this and what your thoughts were i'm just saying 